In this short podcast, we are going to try and relate our own activities to the environment. We are going to look at what we will call our footprint. We say that each of us will leave a footprint on the environment. What do we mean by this? We are trying to consider the impact that we have on our environment in our daily activities. So how easy is this to work out? We will start with a simple example. We have some green beans on our plate. We are about to eat them. Stop for a moment. Now, where did those green beans come from? Did you look at the time that you bought them? If you bought the beans at a supermarket in December, then they probably came from overseas, maybe from a country like Kenya or Egypt or Morocco. Those beans would then have been flown from that country to the United Kingdom. How many miles did they travel? Having landed in the United Kingdom, the beans were then most likely trucked to the supermarket and then you probably drove to your supermarket to purchase the beans. How many more miles have the beans travelled? Now, have you ever wondered why they keep those shelves looking so tempting at the supermarket? There always seems to be produce on sale. What happens at the end of the day? Suppose that not all the beans were sold. Most likely they are then thrown away. Although there are some supermarkets trying to reduce the amounts that do get thrown away. So why did I buy the beans? Do I live in a country that is unable to grow vegetables for the winter months? Of course not. I could have just as easily chosen to eat kale or cabbage or turnips or brussels sprouts or parsnips or many other vegetables. In fact, not only could I have chosen a different vegetable, I might have been able to grow them myself in a garden or an allotment. The food miles would then have been very different, perhaps measured as only a few meters instead of kilometers and no fossil fuels used in getting them to the kitchen. What about that waste? That is a growing problem for our lifestyle with increased numbers living in urban environments. In rural areas the waste simply went to help feed the household pig or the chickens, but we don't have those animals in cities. Am I trying to say that we should not go out and buy our beans if they came from Egypt? And, and what about tomatoes from Spain? There are some items we import from overseas, particularly from developing nations, that we should think about. Is it right to buy flowers that have been imported from a country where there are people who are short of food? Should the land be used for growing crops to feed those people? These are the choices we should be making. This does not mean it would always be wrong to buy overseas produce. What about those tomatoes grown in Spain? We can grow tomatoes in the United Kingdom outdoors or in an unheated greenhouse during the summer months. However, to grow the crop out of season will involve heating the greenhouse and probably providing additional lighting. From the viewpoint of the energy being used to bring the tomatoes to the point of sale, there may be less energy used for the tomatoes being grown in Spain. If food miles are one subject to think about, then what about the use we have in the home of other things? We are all tempted to go out and buy the latest devices on offer. Sometimes this may be because they are more energy efficient. Though well, sometimes we may do it because they have some new features that we like. Now where did those devices come from and why does this matter? Many of the devices will have been made overseas. Energy, energy used and any carbon dioxide produced will be from that country. Should that be part of our footprint? We are the consumers. The conditions in the countries where some goods are produced may be very different from those in the United Kingdom. Do we look at where the goods are produced and at the levels of pollution in those countries? By purchasing goods we are a small part of that pollution. 
Most developed countries recycle goods. We are hoping to reduce the size of our footprint. Plastic, metals, glass and paper are among the items that are most frequently recycled. As figures show, we are recycling more and more each year. We get a feel-good factor. We are trying to take care of our environment. How about thinking about what happens to all that waste we are recycling? Let us just consider all that plastic for a moment. Where does it go if it is to be recycled? Remember that ship that brought all the goods from overseas? Well, it has to be filled for the return journey, so much of that plastic is being shipped back overseas, where the waste can be sorted, then recycled, then used to make goods that can be shipped back to the United Kingdom. Of course, not all the waste is treated in this way. Some is recycled in the United Kingdom. Sadly, some of the recycling is done under conditions that are less than ideal and causes further pollution. This has led to illnesses including high incidences of cancer in some areas where the recycling is done. So where we shop, what we buy and how our goods are packaged can all be a part of our footprint. Are our shopping centres patterns changing? And does this affect our footprint? You may be fortunate to still have a local market operating near you. Buying local produce can reduce the footprint. Market traders typically use far less packaging. Their goods are more likely to be fresh. They may not have travelled as far. However, there are also disadvantages. It takes more time to go from stall to stall. And the market may not be too near a car park. We've considered our footprint for food and other goods. You know, even something as basic as water has a footprint and should be considered. In the United Kingdom, the water from our taps is usually drinkable because it has been treated. That treatment uses energy. Do we waste that water? Does it make any real sense to be using drinking water to water the lawn or to clean the car? We waste a great deal of our water. What if we lived in another country? Would we be as wasteful then? The use of meters has encouraged us to monitor our water use more carefully. Most people would now get a tap that drips repaired fairly quickly, but it was not always so. We are encouraged to buy bottled water, but is it really any better than tap water? If tap water is drinkable, then why buy bottled water? If it is about the taste, then why not simply filter the tap water? Of course, if you go on a holiday where the water from the taps is not considered of suitable quality, then you might want to use bottled water. We should remember that not everyone is fortunate enough to have a supply of clean drinking water, or even a regular supply of water. Think back to those beans. If they are produced using irrigation, then where might the water for irrigation have come from? Perhaps the largest part of our footprint is travel and the means of transportation that we use. We can choose to travel by car, rail or by plane, but each of these will have a footprint in terms of carbon. To avoid that footprint we either have to walk or to use a bicycle. If we do drive then the vehicle we choose will have a big impact on that footprint. Which of these do you think has the greatest footprint? If you drive and own a vehicle then ask yourself, how big is the footprint of the vehicle that I drive? There are sites on the internet where you can enter your details and get an idea of your carbon footprint or your ecological footprint. Using my activities from the previous week, here is the footprint that I had. Just consider why my food pr footprint was so high. I shopped in a supermarket and decided to buy some vegetables that were on offer and seemed to be value for money. Then I looked at the food miles that I had racked up. Beans from Egypt at 3,755 kilometers. Lettuce from Spain traveled 1,385 kilometers. Rocket had traveled 1,687 kilometers. 
more beans, this time from Morocco and another 2,258 kilometers. Fish sticks. Fish sticks had traveled a massive 9,603 kilometers. Finally, prawns, which may have only traveled a few hundred kilometers. So, what is my verdict? Well, I could do a lot better and reduce my foot food footprint. How about you? Examine your shopping basket this week and see where your food comes from.